Bit of a different one this week. We're actually on a bit of a time crunch. Uh, my two youngest are screaming at me, wanting to, uh, even screaming more than Boris normally does, wanting to do their Halloween decoration. So we're gonna punch out a really quick one today. No flip wise data at the end, because I literally don't have time. A uh, little bit burnt out this week. So for those all play along at home, it's about 650 uh, profit after fees, expenses, postage, and all those different things. So it's been a bit of a, a slow week. Um, so that, that's just a little bit of transparency. Now I'll push it back through. Uh, next week. Uh, as we see in the previous videos, I normally go through the Flipwise data, which I want to talk a little bit about today as well, and obviously give you a bit of an idea in respects to that. So what we're going to do, really, really, really quick one, because obviously you're busy, I'm busy, <laughs> my daughters are screaming at me. So I'm going to flip around really quick and we'll go from there. All right, so what I want to do today is talk a little bit about Xbox One games or video games in general. So what I've done is I've actually picked up these two big piles of Xbox One games from the same lady down South Canberra, probably about a 20 minute drive each way. Uh, she wanted $80 for the lot. So what I've done beforehand, uh, because I primarily know a little bit about video games, it was where I pretty much sold heavily in for a couple of years. I've separated the ones that are somewhat decent and these games are, I suppose, what you call the absolute trash. So $20 free postage, and below um so a lot of them are pretty good conditions i'm going to swap out the the broken cases uh for the lower less the lower ones um so what i normally do is keep an eye out of them if they're really low cost ones i don't normally take the the labels off i just make sure i photograph them and go from that perspective but what i want to talk about today is actually variation listings because you haven't heard that before uh so basically i know a couple of months ago i did a video or a reaction video into a particular youtuber that was saying that Falling below standard on YouTube, oh, sorry, on eBay is not a bad thing. Um, they, they, you know, they sold their way out of it and how fantastic they were and all those different things. Uh, you can go through my channel and you know, work out who it was. Realistically, and I've said numerous times, uh, if you watch the Profit Playbook podcast, I think it was well, I'll just finish that episode. They actually had someone from eBay UK that had worked there previously and they pretty much alluded to the same things that I've been alluded to in a lot of videos is that do not fall below standard. <laughs> you you will pretty much risk your account being suspended. And I do see a lot of people uh, go full time and all these different things and obviously lose their accounts, um, get bad advice watching YouTubers like myself uh, and all those different things. So be mindful of that, do take that into consideration. So going back to the video games, what I normally do with these is I'll actually create these in a variation listing so I will list them at that $4.99 to $9.99 mark. And what I will do is I'll actually charge plus postage. So generally speaking, um, these would, you know, what you would class as a small parcel or a small satchel. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily send them that way. Please don't send them in envelopes. <laughs> I know a lot of your favorite YouTubers do, um, and YouTubers with a higher view count and a subscriber count than I do, um, they don't. So at the very, very, very minimum, and I don't have any here on me, send them in a padded mail. They will cost a little bit extra. However, you'll avoid negative feedback. You'll avoid returns, all those different things. So it's better safe than sorry. Do not run your business as you know cheaply as possible. And no, I know that sounds kind of intuitive, but if you are starting off, basically do everything you can to substantiate your business in the sense of feedback, um, all your metrics being perfect and all these different things. So do not watch YouTubers that say, hey, look, send them in green envelopes. You can let me know in the comment section below how wrong I am. However, pay the little bit extra, send them either in a padded mail or untracked, which I don't recommend if you're a new, <laughs> new seller, uh, or just basically charge that postage. So for example, this one is a crap game. It probably goes for about $5, uh, probably with free postage in a variation listing. What I would do is I would charge that for $5 plus the $10 in postage on top of that in the sense that if someone comes along and picks up four or five games, which they most likely will, they'll pay the $10 postage. So those four games there, five games there, will fit in a small padded mailer for, uh, for just say $10. And yeah, or sorry, a small box uh, for $10. Then you've sold four or five games at once for that market price with free postage. So what I would do is basically um, just just take a photo front and back, especially your low cost games. So at the very worst, front and back and probably just the actual game itself like that, just to let them know it's in there uh, to avoid any iron ads and all those different things. So as to what I do with these ones, being a little bit uh, more price, so definitely Ninja Turtles, definitely Attack on Titan. If you see AOT2, that's Attack on Titan. Um, Darksiders, I'll probably, um, I did recomp that, it's probably about the $15 mark, so that's being moved into this one. So how I would, yeah, probably you know, show that on a variation listing, I'd probably choose the, 
probably the more expensive games in that lot, uh, being not Ronaldo. But just hypothetically, if they're the closer to you know to ten or fifteen dollar games, I'd probably take a photo like that and obviously use that as the main picture and use the obviously individual photos um, in the variation listing from there. All right, so basically we're getting into those ones. So out of that eighty dollar lot. Realistically, Ninja Turtles and Attack on Titans well and truly going to get my money back. Uh, Dark Souls, I'll probably keep that or I will sell it probably for 30 bucks. Those, um, these are pretty much just trading fodder, right? So, realistically, I know Game of Stop in America or Game EB Games over here, I'll probably trade them and get two dollars, three dollars each. However, if you are below standard, and I've said this numerous times, is basically you want to motivate eBay to push your stuff through as possible. So, what I would suggest is that. Yeah, if you are below standard or if you are having problems with selling, those $10 games, um, you know, those $15 games in that pile, they never become $4.99 plus post, right? So realistically, and I know a lot of people don't talk about this, and I can tell you by the Flipwise data and tell you by my own research into eBay, um, especially with the, the 90 day sale figures and all those different things, is that variation listings, um, items in that variation listing goes towards your your 90 day count right so realistically it might be one order and that one person might buy 10 games for example um, that doesn't class as one order from the purposes of you know below standard where you need to get a certain threshold to be assessed on a three monthly basis or a monthly basis i can't remember what it is um, and on the flip side is that if they buy one game if they buy two games all these different things so you're trying to motivate the system to push it push it through so enough about variation listings. What I'm doing is a bit of a, a bit of a cleanup again. <laughs> so these are my video uh, board games. So what I'm doing is actually moving them across to this shelf. Uh, these two shelves here, and eventually the third shelf here will be all video uh, board games. If I say video games, just <laughs> you know what to do. So the board games will go here, and primarily is because we've got all the <laughs> the, uh, the the air and rain intensive purposes. So if the rain comes in there's a good chance it's gonna get onto these board games. And some of these board games go for phenomenal amounts of money. Uh, this one's an out of print one. That's an out of print one. Uh, that's an out of print one. So they're about, between those three, I think it's listed to just shy of two grand uh, collectively. Uh, and you've got Gloomhaven there as well. So I don't want them getting wet. So they are moving over here uh, and going from that perspective. So what I wanted to don't you love when you do a diatribe and you realize you didn't press the record button? <laughs> My life. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is behind me, there was some clothing that's no longer there. So it's over there next to Boris now. I did have someone reach out to me and offer to take the whole lot. Um, I did have a few other people reach out to me wanting to cherry pick, which is fantastic. However, um, I want to move it in one lot, right? I need the space. I'm not really interested in you know, taking tops, bottoms, um, you know, lefts, rights, and all these different things. So I did have a few people reach out to me. Um, the one person that took it all, I basically offered it $5 per a piece plus 15% of the sale price um, just to recoup that from it. So kind of like a confinement deal, uh, but a definitely, definitely, definitely good deal in that respect. So my hand again. <laughs> so I did keep Theo. I don't know if you can see Theo. Uh, that's the birds reaching out to me, telling me that I'm good in bird seed. Um, so I did have some people reach out to me in regards to the clothes. I did keep some aside for one particular person that's you know, supported the channel. Yeah, they've been phenomenal. They've been watching Granny Eye for a very long time. So I have left some aside for them just to say thank you. Um, however, like I said, I'm when you when you kind of do bulk sales, uh, you want to get rid of the stuff. You don't really want people coming around treating it like a garage sale and just cherry picking and all those different things. Um, so I've lost track of what I'm going to talk about, but a few people reach out to me regarding Flipwise, right? So I did put in a Facebook group. Someone did ask about Flipwise, and if I my hand, <laughs> my hands falling apart. Uh, so I did have some people reach out to me regarding Flipwise and. They had seen Justin Resells talk about it. They've seen me talk about it on this channel and the post a lot of people out in the States talking about it as well. So long story short, they wanted a um, endorsement for Flipwise, I suppose for lack of a better term. Um, you know, they've seen that I was watching it or I was using it and what my thoughts were and all these different things. Just want to make it abundantly clear, and I'm pretty sure I've said it in previous episodes as well. I'm not endorsed or I'm not sponsored by Flipwise and my caginess, I suppose, for lack of a better term, it's pretty much stick directed like that, right? Because realistically, um, I do use Flipwise. I do enjoy Flipwise. However, it's one of those things that basically depends on your business and how you want to use it and implement it from that perspective. I will say that it's good from a, a content creator's perspective is that 
if you want to um, do content creators to do some what solve videos like me, but they give it somewhat of an integrity because that that data is held off site. Yes, I could put the wrong data in all those different things, but trust me, <laughs> I'm too lazy to do that. Um, however, when it comes down to endorsements, I'm not going to put my reputation on the line as a seller or as a person on YouTube and all these different things for free, right? Like, I know it sounds harsh, I know it sounds a bit convoluted and a little bit selfish in the sense of saying, hey, look, I'm not going to endorse a product and say, hey, look, this is fantastic, do it. Uh, if I'm not being, you know, paid to do it and I wouldn't be, you know, seeking sponsorship if I didn't actually use that product. However, on the flip side is if that happens and that particular person doesn't like it, then my reputation's on the line for nothing. Uh, which is, like I was saying a little bit ago, is in the sense of, you know, if you are supporting a product or you're sponsoring a product and all these different things, I would rather use that product and go from that perspective. However, I've learned quite quickly <laughs> and from past experiences is that you do not give your opinion for free. Um, Bob's going off again. <laughs> if you watch the podcast really early on, um, you used to know that Bob would be a common place. He's a, a robot vacuum cleaner that decides to empty his bin at the most op inopportunity times. But going back to my flip wire stuff, um, like I was saying, is that please, 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 please do your research. I did have someone, and going back on a little, little bit of a rant, a um, little bit of a, a scattered video today. I'm so burnt out, I can't explain it. Um, so they basically reached out to me. It wasn't the two people that I spoke to on. On, on Facebook Marketplace regarding Flipwise. And I have said, if you wanna reach out to me personally, I'm more than happy to tell you from a personal perspective, right? And by all means, watch Justin's videos, watch all the Flipwise data you can get um, to make your own informed choice to see if it actually fits in with your business, right? I did have someone reach out to me on Facebook, Mark, uh, sorry, Facebook Messenger and basically said, hey, look, why aren't you telling people, you know, to, to do it? Like, you know, you're using it, you know, obviously you, we want your endorsement or some, trying to pin me down to basically get a, an opinion out of it from that perspective. Wasn't too interested in doing that. Did tell them that um, all these different things. He said, look, hey, you're a YouTuber. You get paid to do these different things. I can tell you right now, I don't get paid very much. <laughs> not, that I, not that I care. I'm not that I do it for, for, you know, for basically clicks or for views or for anything along the lines of that. Um, it's more documenting your channel. I'm kind of trying to, and Grumpy Granny as well, is trying to inform people that are actually new to the reselling space. Personally, myself, I'm trying to target those people that are a bit, little bit past the new stage, more intermediate and all these different things, looking to branch out. Um, from my perspective, um, if you want it, we'll give you it for free. Just don't stick to one platform. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> like my Flipwise data is primarily fed through eBay. And if you've seen the last three videos, you can actually see a decline in sales, uh, declining in profit margins over a three-week period, right? And we're talking about three, four hundred dollars. If you were doing this full time, which I was, um, you know, there's no sustainability or no consistency in regards to sales. So, I have said numerous times I am building a couple of websites: one a merchandise site just for shits and giggles, um, and the other one just to sell a certain product. Um, and you can probably work out what it is if you look over that way, and probably over this way as well. So, if you are new to the reselling space, and I know I'm rambling. Do your own research, I can't stress that enough. If you are brand new, and this is where I'm, yeah, and this is gonna be a hot take, right? Please let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this one, because I kind of want to endorse Flipwise in the sense for brand new people to give them an idea of what they're working with profit margin wise, because uh, I do think that as soon as you buy your first thing to sell on eBay, especially in a business capacity, um, you need some sort of tracking mechanism like a spreadsheet or a program like Flipwise, all these different things. Um, and I know Tools of Thrifters and I know a lot of other people in the, the YouTube space and you know, reselling space have their own you know, Excel spreadsheets. Um, I don't use them other than Flipwise, so I can't tell you the, the validity or the usefulness of them. But yeah, like I said, I, I do trust those people in the space that I've mentioned. Um, so by all means, go have a look at those spreadsheets if you want to do it from that perspective. But what I like about Flipwise is um, the ability to quite quickly pick it up, as long as you're truthful with the de details, right? And keeping on top of it, which is, um, yeah, it, it only takes a couple of seconds. And this is not an endorsement, but yeah, something that I want new resellers to think about, and those particularly those two people in the Facebook group, is that you need some sort of mechanism that will basically give you the raw data to look at profit margins. Flipwise is very expensive for a brand new seller. I'll tell you that right now. So basically it's a subscription model. If you're under a certain amount of listings, I think 25 from memory, it's free. Uh, if you are under 25 listings and you are looking to stay under 25 listings for 
say an indefinite, not an indefinite period of time, but a, a, quite a, a long period of time. And if I'm going to give my reseller advice and everyone else does it and I hate doing it, please stay as low to 20 listings as you can for the longest period of time. Um, don't sell one item and run out and buy three more like other YouTubers tell you to. You get a cause problems for yourself. What you need to do is basically maybe pick up one or two items, learn how eBay works. So, um, you know, I'm kind of rambling. I probably cut a lot of this out, but if you were to pick up an item, what I would do is basically look at that item and how would I would send that. Um, so, for example, you know, the Skylanders are currently behind me. They all go in boxes. The amount of Skylanders that I've got from Facebook Marketplace deals and people send them to me through just be basically reaching out, coming in. You know, just vinyl satchels. Uh, <laughs> I did have one on me. Kind of like these things, um, with no protection. And surprise, I haven't actually been broken, to you the truth. So, um, and I've had actually had Skylanders poking out, <laughs> the little arms poking out through the, through the thing as well. Do not send them to your customers in, in, in inappropriate packaging. I'm talking about video games, I'm talking about Skylanders, I'm talking about board games. Use boxes where you can. Uh, yes, it might cost you a little bit more, However, like I said, it is you need to basically build your business up. Um, don't go crazy in the sense of buying branded boxes. I know people have done that before, but build it up with packaging materials that are use, you know, a fit for purpose, right? So I would be horrified if I received a $500 board game in a, in a vinyl satchel uh, or you know, Skylanders in vinyl satchels because the first thing is I'm forking out you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars for Skylanders. And they're rocking up in vinyl satchels. And these characters are very, very, very rare. Some of them going up to 100, 200, 300, 400 each, uh, arriving in a vinyl satchel. Don't particularly care from that perspective because they're one-off sellers. And I probably will talk a little bit about that in this episode as well. I'm gonna try and cut it down to as much as I can. Um, but like I said, is make sure it's fit for purpose. Like I said, with video games, do not send them in paper envelopes. I don't care <laughs> who tells you otherwise, just sold something. Um, who tells you otherwise, just basically you know, put them in a padded mailer because you're not going to upset your customer by packaging it in a padded mailer, having it arrive. Um, you know, for example, I, I bought a $100 video game. Uh, not this one, however, it was, just say this is a $200 video game, right? Bought this off eBay uh, and it arrived in one of those green mailers. It was raining really heavy that day, got to the letterbox, which is just over that side of the, the garage and it was completely wet. I had to swap the case out. Luckily, the paperwork, you know, the, 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 the artwork wasn't damaged. It didn't sap that through, um, but that is something that you need to take into consideration. That would have been a negative feedback if I didn't buy it from my my Octopus account, right? So this is what I come back to and said numerous times before, is have a separate buying and separate selling account. Don't do what I do and buy and sell from primarily the same account because you will have that fear of retribution, right? So realistically, I should have left negative or neutral feedback for, for that particular game. I haven't left that feedback. So basically, 90% of the time, I will like positive feedback and go from that perspective. Um, if it really, really irks me or <laughs> really, really pisses me off, for lack of a better term, um, I won't leave feedback. Generally, if I'm really, 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 really irked, I'll reach out to the buyer, uh, sorry, up to the seller and say, hey, look, this is how it's arrived. Um, change your changes your process and procedures right so that's what i look for primarily looking for an education piece to the buyer if they're oh sorry to the seller if they're a bit of a, a bozo or they don't <laughs> take kindly to me being very condescending and telling me how to run the business um that would be probably grounds for negative feedback from that perspective and you know and not to sound like a prick I know how to word negative feedback so it sticks. <laughs> because like I said, eBay won't remove negative feedback that is personal opinion, right? And by all means, you know, like I said, you can check my feedback left for others. I've probably, in the four years I've been selling on that account, I've probably left one negative feedback. Um, and like I said, that I could probably count on one hand all the really bad transactions I've had, like besides this PlayStation 3 game. Um, in the last 12 months, probably two out of the probably hundreds that I purchased on eBay. So it's not a common occurrence, but just be very mindful is that you, if you are selling and you are buying like eBay arbitrage, all those different things, use separate accounts. Um, especially if you're trying to, you know, if you're buying a product uh, and selling that product, don't go with your account, which primarily deals in that product, <laughs> to try and send offers or lowball other sellers because, yeah, obviously they can work out quite quickly what you're selling and what you're doing. 
from that perspective. All right, so quite quickly wrapping it up, uh, in regards to the flipwire stuff, do your own research, can't stress that enough. Uh, yes, I do use it, yes, I do enjoy it. However, it works for my business, it works for a YouTube content perspective. Uh, it collects all the data I need. I have reached out to Justin, which I've said numerous times before, uh, to make some changes which will make it more attractive to the Australian audience. And let's be honest, if they implement, well, if he implements those changes, um, I will give it a glowing endorsement, right? Um, I will do it from that perspective. Like I said, normally, if he wants to give me a, a sponsorship in the sense of a, a discount code, I don't particularly want it from a financial point of view. Um, I'm not going to, you know, like basically direct traffic over there. Um, without no benefit to the people actually watching these videos or actually using that product. Um, and like I said, you know, once those little things iron itself out, especially in regards to my post, um, GST and a couple of other things, I can't remember it off the top of my head, um, it will be a, a fantastic product for Australians. And like I said, that once that's done, I probably will give it a revisit, you know, the recommendation go from that perspective. Don't, um, yeah, well, well, that's it. All right, so what I've done is I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Before I ramble on too much more, I have to get onto these Halloween decorations. I'm going to wrap the video up now. Uh, the podcast is out Tuesday morning. Um, I've been a bit slack in the sense I've been burnt out, just trying to do everything, getting ready for everything ready for Q4. Um, but please, if you take one thing away, and thank you very much for yeah for staying this long, <laughs> listening to my diatribe and my ramble, um, just make sure that you... Focus on your customers. So look at it primarily from a customer perspective. Look at it primarily how you want things to arrive to you is how they go out. I don't care if, you know, a particular YouTuber send things out in, you know, like green envelopes or they send it out in satchels and all these different things. Everything here, uh, regardless of the cost, um, you know, like I said, it could be a $5 game or it could be a $500 game. It goes out in the same packaging primarily because um, I know how to send these things, right? So what you need to do if you are a brand new reseller, and I'll probably rehash this already, is that before you go commit to a purchase, work out how you're going to send that. Um, don't go to Facebook Marketplace, Facebook groups, um, and ask, how am I going to send this Esky or how am I going to send this Halloween decoration? Um, because you're going to be out of luck. But anyway, that's enough for me today. If you have liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> I'll be able to spin it out in a second. But thank you very much again for all those that watched last week. Uh, my bite's still a little bit sore, but it's good from that perspective. But uh, I really need to get it stabilized. But we'll see you next time. Bye.